I want to start with a story of an attack on something so American, you can always put it in the same category as baseball, an apple pie. I'm talking about rock and roll, and more specifically, one of the most well-known instruments that has helped create and keep rock and roll alive, not to mention jazz and country music as well, for decades, the Gibson guitar. Well, apparently, federal agents in this country are taking issue with the 100-year-old company. Last week, the Gibson guitar factories in Memphis and Nashville, Tennessee, were raided. Some of the workers told they could face prison time. It was the second raid at the Gibson factories in as many years. This time, agents confiscated wood imported from India that was apparently in violation of Indian export law. Now, let me say that again. The U.S. government issued warrants based on its interpretation of another country's laws. Now, I should mention, there is a, a law in this country. It's called the Lacey Act. It requires companies to make detailed disclosures about wood imports and bars the purchase of goods exported in violation of a foreign country's laws. But is this part of a larger and dangerous trend? There is one man who says yes, radio host Alex Jones in Austin, Texas. Oh, actually, we are going to actually talk to the CEO, Henry Jeskowitz, the CEO and chairman of Gibson Guitar. Well, what happened was, uh, you know, I was at home coming into work, and I got a call that federal agents had uh, come to the office and are in my office and have sealed my office shut. They are pouring over the corporate headquarters, and they have also gone to our manufacturing plants. Uh, checking with the manufacturing plants, the agent, you know, over... Uh, two dozen armed federal agents uh, went into the plants uh, at gunpoint, removed people, uh, shut down the manufacturing operations, uh, and started to confiscate various kinds of wood, uh, papers, and computer hard drives. I know there's a lot of theories out there right now in terms of why Gibson specifically was targeted. Um, let me just get your theory. I, I know you've had about a week to digest this and kind of look into it and talk to a lot of people. What is your understanding in terms of why Gibson was targeted? Well, it's not really, I don't know. Uh, the, the Justice Department is not talking to us. Uh, we haven't been charged you know, uh, so there, it's impossible for me to determine what is the motivation for singling us out. In, and we are being singled out. Other companies are doing exactly the same thing with no consequences. Uh, so obviously, we are being singled out for some reason. No one has told us what it is. And I, you know, some people said perhaps it's political uh, motivation. Well, it may be. Uh, but I don't know. Political in what way, Henry? You know, I don't know. There's some, some political agenda that I'm not aware of. Um, pretty interesting. Talk to me about Gibson itself. I mean, we mentioned earlier this is just a, a long time, more than 100 years, I think, uh, American company. Even during the recession, you guys were adding jobs, not cutting them. Uh, talk to me a little bit about the company. Yeah, we, we really hired uh, 580 uh, uh, new American workers over the last two years. We are growing, we are successful, we are competing internationally successfully. Uh, more than 60% of our product is sold overseas, so that we're a net exporter. Uh, we ha are philanthropic, we have a foundation, and uh, we have been very involved in conservation and sourcing uh, would uh, the, the right way. Interesting. Um, now, so far, you already mentioned you no, no charges have been filed. Any indication when you're going to actually hear from the Justice Department? It, it is so frustrating. We have been under investigation for two years uh, on, on another issue, on, on wood apparently from Madagascar, uh, two years, and we, as charges still have not been filed. We filed a lawsuit to recover the goods that were seized in 2009, two years ago. We have incurred huge amounts of cost. We have provided to the government 80,000 documents 
uh, invoices and so forth on our sourcing and other uh, aspects of our business, uh, they had completely imaged all our hard drives in the first raid. Uh, and still, here we are, all of a sudden, another raid, no notice. And, and we're still under investigation. This could go on for a long time. So the 2009 raid, you said you lost a bunch of money then. And from what I understand, you've been closed since this last raid. How much money do you think you've lost this time around? Well, all, to get, all the incidents, you know, so far add up to about $3 million. And that includes uh, goods that were about a $1 million of, of wood that was seized. Uh, that. Uh, and then the rest is in legal fees and disrupted production. Let's take this out of the Gibson store and take it to a bigger picture. What do you think it says, um, you know, if what everything you're telling me is true, that you have followed all the laws and yet still you're being targeted by the FBI, by federal agents, what do you think it says that this can happen in this country? Well, I can't believe it. You know, I can't believe it can happen in this country, but it, it it is, and it, it has, uh, and I think it's wrong, and I think it's unfair, and I think that we need to change the law to allow people uh, not to suffer this kind of intimidation, uh, you know, in the future, not just Gibson, uh, but any, any uh, biz legitimate business person. Um, you know, there, there are critics who say that uh, it's because you've given to Republican candidates and that, you know, some of your biggest competitors give to Democrats. Do you think that that argument holds any water? You know, I mean, I, I've given to uh, Republicans, and, and I've, but I've also contributed to Democratic campaigns. Uh, I'm not uh, an active Republican. I, I, I just can't imagine that, that the amount of participation I have in politics would justify, you know, this kind of treatment. So I, I, I don't think that's what it is. What is, um, and I'll just wrap it up with this question for you, what is your fear in terms of the larger implications of incidents like this? Well, you know, the, my first fear is, is my company and my people, of course. Uh, you know, this is shutting down our business. You know, if, if, if the government maintains an extreme stance that we cannot import Indian uh, sourced wood, that is the majority of the wood for guitars. It is going to be virtually impossible to replace that in a short amount of time. Uh, that will, in fact, be disastrous to our business. Uh, secondly, it, it's the, the, the fact that the this federal process uh, doesn't allow due process. We have not had our, uh, our issues heard and adjudicated by a court of any kind. We, we have nowhere to go to raise our hands and say, pardon me, that's wrong. I have proof someone needs to, you know, an independent third party needs to say, yes, you are, no, you're not. And, and, and we haven't got that ability at this point. Well, Henry, then why don't you just move Gibson to India? You could certainly get cheaper labor. Would you consider doing that? Well, we're, you know, we have to stay in business. I, I, I am hopeful that our public relations campaign and talking to you and, and the folks out there uh, will generate enough pressure that we can get our grievance heard and addressed in a fair manner so that we could put this to bed. And that was Henry Jeskowitz, CEO and chairman of the Gibson Guitar Corporation.